Hi, I'm Wendy Rutledge and this is Palm Beach TV, a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. Here's what's coming your way next on your only island newscast. Town leaders share their visions of Palm Beach achievements and challenges. You'll hear from the featured speakers at this year's Director's Luncheon. How to prevent a condo collapse like the one in Surfside from ever happening on the island. You'll learn about the ideas shared at the recent Structural Safety Seminar. A fixture in the Palm Beach Art Gallery scene, Lyman Gallery goes virtual. See the move it is making online. You'll meet the new directors and a new executive committee member here at the Civic Association. Kudos to a longtime champion of education. One of our own directors receives a deserving accolade. And don't be surprised when a new, fresh email called The Civic arrives in your inbox. We'll show you the newsletter's whole new look. These stories and much more next on Palm Beach TV. The annual director's luncheon is not only a chance for 140 or so directors to all gather together, it is also a chance for them to hear from the town leaders about their challenges and their triumphs. And this year's news was decidedly upbeat. The vaccination rate in this town is almost 100%. I don't think any other community in the country can say that. So kudos to you all for that. Mayor Moore relayed the high COVID protection message in person to a Palm Beach Civic Association audience of directors that hasn't gathered as a group since March of 2020. Starting with this good news, that despite the challenges of COVID-19, the mayor says Palm Beach will offer its residents an actual tax decrease. In the FY22 budget, we lowered the millage rate to 2.8966. This is the lowest rate in Palm Beach County for any full service community and the lowest rate in our town in over 25 years. Among the projects Mayor Moore outlined for next year, the renovation of the historic North Fire Station. The second oldest functioning fire station in the state of Florida. And as such, this historic landmark must be preserved and protected. Meantime, Assistant Town Manager Carolyn Stone dazzled the executive committee in its meeting prior to the luncheon with a glowing report on the new and improved marina. I can tell you every captain that's there that I've spoken to and some of the owners that have been on the boats right now at the vessels are telling us it's the finest marina in the world that they have visited. Stone credited the town council for moving ahead despite COVID obstacles to renovate the marina, while at the same time improving the adjacent Lake Drive Park as an enhancement to the neighborhood. The town council made a conscious decision not to build a restaurant, not to have fueling. Some of those um, obvious business choices you might make in the private sector because you're not concerned about the neighborhood and the impact to the residents, but the town council didn't want to do that, and rightly so. So much good news all around. And from the chairman, Bob Wright, this message of gratitude to the extraordinary membership of the Palm Beach Civic Association. It's education, it's what they've done, uh, giving uh, uh, all kinds of areas. So, you know, I, I, my, my hope constantly is that we get to be able to capture uh, some of that strength. The Palm Beach Civic Association and the Citizens Association co-sponsored a seminar on building safety. They brought together experts to discuss how to prevent a disaster like what happened to a condo in Surfside from ever happening on the island. Here's Christina. For Tarya Geis, this structural safety seminar is very personal. I lost two friends in Surfside. And it just emphasized how much, how many condos there are up and down the strip, and how I'm sure we are. I mean, there's always that possibility. You know, you, you can 
wake up the next morning or not wake up the next morning. And it's very, very serious and uh, something none of us want to deal with. Before Thanksgiving, Director of Planning and Zoning for the Town of Palm Beach, Wayne Bergman, a structural engineer and a condo law attorney, were featured speakers at a structural safety seminar. It was co-sponsored by the Palm Beach Civic Association and the Citizens Association. The goal? to share best practices about how to avoid a condo collapse like the tragic disaster in Surfside. Whatever Palm Beach does, I want it to be the standards that are the highest standards for an area with a saltwater environment, and so I don't know what those are yet. Wayne Bergman briefly debuted a proposed plan requiring condos to get recertified for safety after 25 years of the age of the building, a stronger, more aggressive plan than the recertification after 30 years that's required in Dade and Broward counties. This has been great, but what are we going to do next? I think that he should bring that forward and then the council can deliberate on it and we can have a vote. Bergman says his plan is ready for council review and could be on the agenda in the next month or two. As for Tyra Geis, after living here for seven years, she is ready to see change to prevent something that ended up killing her two friends, something that she never imagined before this past June. I was not really nervous before, to be honest with you, uh, other than flooding, that was my concern. But now that I've seen and I've had friends that have you know, died in that, uh, it's a whole different story. It's so serious for all of us. We never know. None of those people ever thought. So what is next? Well, lots of ideas were shared here, so it's safe to assume that a plan will be drawn up and presented to town council in the new year. For Palm Beach TV, I'm Christina Nicholson reporting. From construction services to landscape services, the island can be a pretty noisy place these days. And the Palm Beach Town Council is thinking about cutting some of the hours for those services on the island. But what was really interesting at the last town council meeting was just how many landscapers came to the microphone and told the council, look, if you cut our hours, you may hurt our businesses and reduce the amount of services that they can provide the island. We're going to suffer irreparable harm. We are going to lose employees because we aren't allowed to do the work that we would normally work. And they can go in any other community in the county and work. So our skilled labor is going where they can get overtime on Saturdays. But we can't do that here on the island if you change it the way you're proposing to change. When it comes to producing the work that you all require, you're making it more and more difficult. It's, 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 it's not easy to go out in the hot sun in the summer and accomplish this work that, that's needed on the island for beautification. My point is, is that taking away that, that time to be able to accomplish these tasks of quietly putting a plant in the ground or getting in a tree and using a pole saw to, to trim this material will, I think, ultimately hinder the beautification and continued care that we try to give these homes in, in the town. It seems that so many of our local businesses have pivoted their business model just a little bit in the wake of the pandemic to go for more online sales. And that is just what happened at a local gallery. Here's Christina to explain. This is the artist, uh, Louis Finkelstein, it's in the state. And he for about 40 years, Ellen Lyman has filled the walls of Palm Beach with her artwork and creations from other fellow artists near and far. And this is a, um, Danish painted. Okay. The name is Eva Kavetni. But now she's opening new doors, digital doors on the internet. That's the way you sell art today. You have to be online and available, easily available. Um, it's obvious that this has made this more important since COVID. And um, I think what we sell, which is original paintings, uh, are very transferable very easily transported and um, uh, will show up beautifully online. And I think it gives a not just local, but national and international market for my artists. 
She calls it the Netflix of art, being able to choose beautiful art at beautiful prices, not only helping the artists by giving them a worldwide platform, but by catering to art collectors as well. There's a lot of talent available, and we hope uh, we can present this in the new uh, website, the Palm Beach Art Collection, uh, to collectors around the world. In fact, we made our first sale to somebody in Seoul, South Korea. You can shop in person here in the Paramount Building, or you can head online to their brand new website at the Palm Beach Art Collection .com. For Palm Beach TV, I'm Christina Nicholson reporting. We are rolling out the welcome sign to new members, new directors, and a new member to our executive committee. We are pleased to welcome Mark Zeidman as the newest member to the Palm Beach Civic Association's executive committee. Zeidman will serve as chairman of the Civic Association's tax and finance committee and the Palm Beach County Committee. We also are delighted to welcome four new directors, Bill Bone, Deborah Norville, Craig Omvet, and Greer Presley. Now to some well-deserved recognition to a long-standing executive committee member, Michelle Kessler, who serves the Palm Beach Civic Association as a vice chair of the executive committee and the chair of the fundraising committee is, this time, being honored by PBS with the 2021 Star of Education Award. The Star Award pays tribute to a distinguished individual or family who has made an indelible and lasting impact on education in the community, especially for the underserved. Congratulations to Michelle Kessler as this year's recipient of the PBS Star of Education Award. And now here's Christina again, coming back to tell us about a transformative project she's been working on. Did you catch the Civic this week? We've rebranded Membership Matters to create the Civic. This monthly newsletter will come to you with a brighter layout, featuring the splash of colors in our pinwheel logo. Each month, your eye will be drawn to pictures of your friends and neighbors around town and at our Palm Beach Civic Association events. You'll learn what's trending on social media and what future Civic Association gatherings you may want to attend. Be civic-minded and look for the Civic in your inbox at the end of every month. That's it for us. Thank you so much for supporting Palm Beach TV, made possible by the Palm Beach Civic Association and our viewers. Happy holidays. I'm very thankful that through the two years of the pandemic, all of my family remained healthy and um, active and able to come back to much more of a normal life now. One of the things um, I think you noticed right away when you returned to Palm Beach is the noise level. It is really quite noisy and um, so that I, I'm hoping for a quieter town and also for um, civilized drivers, I guess. <laughs>